Hello and welcome to the basic data structures playlist introduction video. Um, let's just jump right in. I'm just going to give you guys a quick spiel and rundown of what to expect in this playlist. So right away we're just going to start off with uh, tran transistors. Um, transistors are what I would call a physical data structure as in you know many data structures we talk about bits, booleans, bytes, and all this stuff. Those are what I might call theoretical. They, they technically do exist um, in a physical sense, but not, they don't really man, the, the transistors, how these data structures truly manifest themselves, right, and I think it's just good to familiarize ourselves with, you know, the most groundbreaking construct of our, really, I would say, our time, but, the, you know, the transistors open, like, your computer, billions of transistors, and, like, I shouldn't have to sell the point of why we should understand transistors, right, as computer scientists, you know, we bow to their mercy, but, we're, I think we're, we're just going to familiarize ourselves with the transistors so we can start doing some really cool stuff because, you know, we, we're going to build a groundwork of understanding of how the transistor functions and then we're going to go into logic gates. And then through logic gates, we're going to understand how these logic gates can physically manifest themselves. And then from that, we're going to start understanding how um, we can start to get more comp complex ordered level thinking at this level. Um, kind of where it's like, you know, we can... Using just transistors, we can start talking about binary math. Like once we establish logic gates, right? We can start talking about like how do you do addition? How do, you, how do computers do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division? Right? These aren't really things that you know some computer scientists, you know, electrical engineering students definitely probably, like, especially EECS, you know, coolest thing ever, right? But you know, um, it, you know, you would never really have to answer the question like how does a computer do addition and subtraction math, right? But I, I think it's good to understand because, you know, just a quick sell, you know, just to sell the thing, like, you know, we work with these data structures every single day, right? And it's just good to understand, and I think it's just good to understand, like, how does it function, right? Like, what is really going on underneath? Like, you know, that's the whole purpose of everything I do. Like, I ask questions, and I'd like to figure them out. Um, so ho hopefully I've sold you on that, and I hopefully I've justified the existence of logic gates and, um, and math and the transistor. Because um, obviously, I know some of, I, I understand maybe it's not what you would expect since one could argue it doesn't have any real application. Um, it's not like you'll ever really get a question about this. It'll just make you, but it'll, it's like a inside thing. You'll feel better and you'll have a better understanding, but by no means will it maybe improve your ability to write code, right? Um, but I still think it's good to understand. Um, then we go to primitives. Here we're going over the basic constructs that many computer science students are you know, vastly familiar with bits, bytes, booleans, uh, ints, floats, the whole thing. I'm going to be using C-sharp's definition. Uh, many, uh, there are many languages, and I don't want to run the risk that perhaps a language has a different definition. You know, the first thing that comes to mind is when, I, when you ask, if you ask in C++, a long is defined as a 32-bit value, whereas in modern languages such as Java and C-sharp, a long is defined as a 64-bit value. Um, and C sharp also has an additional data structure called, um, or initial primitive or value type, whatever you want to call it, called the decimal, which, you know, it's extra thing you might as well add on, might as well explore. Plus, C sharp and Java are literally identical when it comes to their definitions. And also, uh, C sharp introduces unsigned types, so we can do some unsigned math and have some fun with those unsigned data structures. Um, yeah, I think that's, hopefully, I've justified it. You know, it's not just I love C sharp and, like, you know, I think it's God's gift to the world or anything, but like it, I just feel like it's just good to use here. Um, and then we're gonna be talking about math. Um, so I'll introduce the primitives, you know, talk about their weaknesses and strengths and yada yada. Some who knows what I'll talk about. I don't even know. But then we'll be talking, and then I'll I'll touch on the math for some of the basic data structures. Like really, the one thing that hits me is like floating point math. You know, so I have some friends I talk to, and if they don't understand something, that's usually a good indicator for me to um, make videos. You know, these people I highly look up to, they're geniuses. Right, then I ask questions, and if they can't answer them, I feel like, ooh, that's a good opportunity to maybe push a video out there. But, you know, I've asked, like, you know, how does floating point math done? Like, you know, these guys are smart enough to know, like, oh, yeah, how does a, a float is represented with a sine, a mantissa, and an exponent? Like, that's good and all. But, like, how do you really do math with, um, with it? Because, I mean, you know, the signs that are going to be different. Uh, no, sorry, not the signs. Like, yeah, yeah, the signs might be different. Whatever, you can fix that. Like, you know, the, the exponents aren't necessarily going to be lined, so you can't just line the bits and do the math, right? You're going to have to do something special, right? And, you know, they couldn't answer it, so I was like, oh, that's probably a good idea to make a video uh, 
and so that's inspired this whole thing. Um, sorry, I'm talking too long. We're gonna be we're gonna be having fun. We're gonna understand floating point math really well. I guess that's how we'll sell it. I Meaning, I'm pretty sure everyone's been bit by floating point math at one point. So maybe you can just skip this video and go straight to the floating point math, and we'll have some fun there. But I really do hope that we have some fun with uh, all these videos I'm about to make. Um, we're going to understand data structures at, to a point where I'm pretty sure it won't help you program any better. Um, but I think it's just good to understand the tools that you're using. This video has gone on long enough. I'm just going to end it here. Uh, goodbye, guys, and keep learning, and hopefully you guys enjoy the playlist.